Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. This show is brought to you by Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine. It's OBA with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces, their perfectly pampered pets, and who's walking who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Hey, welcome to the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Boo! Hey, did I scare you? Or did I just pique your curiosity? With Halloween just around the corner, it is timing that our special guest today is here. And she will be sharing some ghost stories. Make that ghost cat stories. Please give pause and applause to award-winning pet author, Dusty Rainbow, who's here to talk about her latest book. It's called Ghost Cats 2. Hey, welcome, Dusty. Hi, well, thank you for having me again, as always. I'm so delighted to be here. Well, guys, she's going to help us with some perplexing questions. Do ghost cats exist? Are they friendly? Do they want a guest spot on the new ghost show on CBS? Probably the person on the planet has the best answers is our guest, Dusty Rainbow. And she's going to share some spooktacular cat tales <laughs> after we take this commercial break. So sit, her. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Hi, Pet Pals. Arden Moore here to chat about H2O. Water's wonderful, but know what's even better for your dogs and cats? Isotonic drinks called Kitty Raid and Doggy Raid. My small dog, Emma is not a big water drinker. So I treat her to doggy raid at mealtime and after we take long walks. And I rarely see my orange tabby rusty at the water bowl. So I put a few squirts of kitty raid in a bowl and he comes running. I treat all my furry bunch to a gravy-like meal topper called yummy raid. Great news, doggy raid. Kitty Raid and Yummy Raid contain electrolytes, amino acids, prebiotics, and much more healthy ingredients for your pets. Veterinarians give them paws up, and so do I. Learn more by visiting doggyraid.com. That's D O G G Y R A D E.com. Drink up, pets. Let's talk pets on petliferadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I am so jazzed to introduce all of you who are tuning in from all over the world, a remarkable author and a great friend. Dusty Rainbow is a best-selling author of both fiction and nonfiction. Most of her books are focused on cats, but she is not limited to that genre. And uh, boosted by the keen interest in her book called Ghost Cats, Human Encounters with Feline Spirits, she is back. And just in time for the Halloween season, she has a new book, and it's all about spiritual felines, what's going on in the world and the afterlife and the book is called ghost cats 2 more encounters with feline spirits Whew. did i get all that right dusty you absolutely did you uh, pause up and and click and treat so yeah, 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 good yeah. work <laughs> so you have tackled a lot of subjects in the worlds of felines i mean i love your book csi which stands for Cat Scene Investigator, Solve Your Cat's uh, Litter Box Mystery. So you've gone from the litter box to this life and beyond. 
That's right. Yes, uh, Ghost Cats 1 and 2 are both about people's encounters with feline spirits, which years ago I didn't believe in, but I've had one encounter. And so it's like, well, changed my mind. (laughs) All right. And we're going to dive into some of the tales, but I love your dedication. It's not your usual dedication in a book by an author. Your dedication in Ghost Cats too. you say, to everyone who has dismissed that shadow out of the corner of the eye or felt an invisible cat jumping on the bed. Hey, (laughs) you're not crazy. You're blessed. Now, why did you use the term blessed? Well, because the one thing about ghost cats is universally, it seems to be a very gentle encounter. You know, cats are part of your home. Whereas if it were a human ghost, it would feel more like an invasion, even if it's somebody you love. It's not expected, but cats are just there. And so uh, getting a visit from somebody who has passed, a kitty who has passed is a blessing because it's an opportunity to say goodbye. You get even if no words are exchanged, it's it's that last moment together. So I, like I think that. it's a blessing. Well, and the other thing is, I think uh, ghost cats are coming out of the closet now, right? Maybe a decade, two decades ago, people were just pussyfooting around <laughs> when it came to admitting <laughs> that they like cats. Even men, like real men like cats. They now, um, there's some pretty cool dudes out there, our producer included, Mark Winter, who love cats and aren't afraid to say that. So there's been this evolution in embracing cats as our pets and as our our pals. My cat, Casey, BFF, best feline friend, and Rusty, the performer who is your- My God God cat. My God kitty, yes, absolutely. (laughs) So I think we are evolving in Uh understand. We never will understand cats. I don't think we ever can. They're a mystery, I think. There was a big special on Netflix called Inside the Mind of a Cat, Mm -hmm. and it was fascinating. But I wanted to ask you, because you've been in the cat world for more than two decades, have you seen this trend where it's cool to like cats and people are starting to invest more time and effort to learn more about why they're not little dogs? I think you are absolutely right. You know, I don't know if it's because there are more cat centric programs or if cats, you know, people are just realizing that cats are a little bit easier to take care of. Not that they're carefree, but that, you know, you don't have to walk them at four in the morning. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. (laughs) But they have become the most popular four legged pet in the United States and and certainly uh, one of the most popular in the world. So uh, yes, I I think. And now there's things like adventure cats. There's kitty cat cafes. And that coupled with the show, I know you love this show, CBS's Ghost. And I don't think that show would have been as popular a decade ago, but now a lot of people are enjoying it. So I'm trying to do a parallel in this path of popularity, cats and the show Ghost. Would you agree? I absolutely do. And you've got, you know, it used to be there were no paranormal shows. Now yeah. you've got ghost adventures and ghost hunters and ghost this and ghost that and, you know, paranormal caught on camera. So people are, are fascinated by the, the topic. And uh, I, I think that that has also contributed to the popularity of ghost cats. So in your book, Ghost Cats 2, you actually divide it into like seven categories. Uh-huh. Um, I like it. Some of the sections are called guardian cats. You've got some other ones that are, let me, I, I've got my notes here, not my ghost cat. I mean, they're all different sections and the stories, there's several stories in each of these sections. Some of these have taken place a while ago and some of them are today. So how did you even get on this path to find people willing to share their tales about, I think, I think my ghost cat has visited me. Well, it was kind of surprising because originally Ghost Cats 1 was uh, published by a a New York publisher. And when they came to me, I was like, where am I going to get these stories? So I put the word out and friends told friends and friends, friends told friends. And then all of a sudden I was getting emails from the CEO of a, a, a corporate 500 company or attorneys, or I, I had one that was a, uh, an orthopedic surgeon uh, who was also an evangelical hospital chaplain. Wow. 
And you know, God spelled backwards is not cat, but <laughs> that that is true. But I do think that he was a gift, so we don't get so full of ourselves as we do with with dogs. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I just put the word out, and it was shocking how many surprising, a happy surprise, how many people contacted me and said, "I had this story," and and I will say that a number of people said, "You can share my story," but. Like Dragnet, you must change the details to protect the the encounter, the encounter. Are you getting more people coming out of the ghost cat closet now? Absolutely. I'd say about a third of them this time didn't want to be outed. So okay. uh, <laughs> I don't know what that's like. I'm just I, I, you know, I know you don't. So Ghost Cat 2 has more the names are there and, and Ghost Cat original more people were a little less confident, right? Or a little well, less. Actually, that's kind of surprising because in this one, there were a few more that didn't want to be recognized. And that's okay. I mean, you know, I did change. I said this in the, the introduction. I, uh, some of them were changed right. up enough so that you wouldn't know who it was, okay. even if you knew the person. So, well, I think one thing as a, a trait I love about you, Dusty, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, you do your homework you're able to set up the scene. If it's in a certain town, you know things about that town. Mm -hmm. Where did you get this uh, journalistic talent? Well, like you, I started out as a journalist. And you uh, still are. I still am. Yep. A good one, guys. A good one. She's not doing politics. She's non-partisan. <laughs> Don't right. want any part of that insanity. Right. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, but but I also, as a, a little kid, wanted to be a fiction writer. So when I started writing books, I was able to bring in the creativity and, and the mood setting that I learned as a, a fiction writer and, and marry that to the ability to ask lots of questions, and which also helped me with the mood because, you know, the more you delve into it, the more information you get and the more three-dimensional your story is. And speaking of delve in, we're going to dig in and share a few stories from the pages of Ghost Cats 2 after we pay for this show by taking this commercial break. So sit and purr. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Paws up, pet pals. Arden Moore here. I have great news. Pet King Brands, the makers of veterinary-approved Zymox and Oratine, have unleashed new products aimed at keeping your cat and dog healthy and happy. You can now keep your pet's coat in tip-top shape with the new hypoallergenic Zymox shampoo and conditioner. They contain oak extract and enzymes that provide relief for sensitive, itchy, and irritated skin. And call in all feline fans, Zymox has not one but three new products to keep your cat purring. They include an enzymatic topical cream to relieve itching and inflammation. There's an enzymatic ear solution that's easy to administer and an enzymatic ear cleanser me wow all of these catering to cats more great news save 20 percent at checkout by adding this code 20 arden that's 20 arden learn more at zymox.com that's z y m o x pause up ever pet knows there's a lot in your life that you worry about we want to make sure your pet's flea and tick protection isn't one of them Teva Pet offers vet quality flea and tick protection that has the same active ingredients as leading brands like Canine Advantix 2 and Frontline Plus, but that cost much less, which means you can give your pet total flea protection worry free. Teva Pet, helping you and your pet live your best life. Online at tevrapet.com. That's T E V R A pet.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. We're back from the lot. Just check the paper, and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OBHAVE. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OBHAVE show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I'm talking with. And you're listening to Dusty Rainbow, a best-selling author, fiction and nonfiction. I love your bio. You say that you and your husband, Weems, share an unhaunted house 
with cats and an occasional dog in a beautiful, is it Flower Mound? I know your PO, I get confused. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, Flower Mound, Louisville area, North Dallas, whatever you want to call it, North Texas. <laughs> okay, good. So one of the stories I wanted to have you share a little bit is called, let me get it. I got my notes. Hang on. I got my notes. Okay. I can't even pronounce it. Pie whack it, a Siamese cat. The section is called the paper pusher and it features uh, the experience of a gal named Ruth McClure who worked a lot of shifts at a hospital, but she had a, uh oh, she didn't clean the litter box <laughs> daily. I have to say, this is my favorite story in the whole book. Oh, wow. We just lost Ruth. She's been a friend of mine for uh, 30 years. So wow. uh, actually 35 years. So she gave you her name. Oh, she gave me her name, the name. Yes. And the cat's name was Pie Wacket, P-Y-E-W-A-C-K-E-T. I have never thought of that name for a cat. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I think Pie Wacket had the name when she got her. Oh. And I actually had the honor of getting to meet Pie Wacket. I knew oh, her cool. for about a year or two before she passed. And Pie Wacket already had the name. It probably came from the uh, Jimmy Stewart movie, oh, Bell okay. Book Candlestick. Oh, there you go. I was going to say nickname Pee Pee. <laughs> no, I think she, I think they called her Pie. <laughs> okay, Pie. All right. So Pie R Square. <laughs> pie R Square. So this is an indoor cat, but one time the kitty got out and it was a tragic turn of events. Yes. Pie Wacket was approaching 25 years old. She oh, was, my Methuselah. Wow. Yes, she absolutely was Methuselah. And, uh, you know, uh, Ruth knew that the, the time was coming. She just didn't feel like it was quite there yet. And uh, let me share one story about Pie Wacket. It's in the book. Okay. I just want to go, this old cat, her name's Pie. Da -da 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 <laughs> with a Pie Wacket here. Not, I know. I've only had one cup of coffee. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so Ruth came home. Uh, she worked 24-hour shifts at uh, Baylor Hospital. And she had seven kids and oh my goodness, you know, her life was busy, busy, busy. So uh, one morning she just fell into bed and Pie Wacket didn't like the uh, state of her litter box. So Pie Wacket took a dried cat turd, mm. carried it up there in her mouth and set it on the pillow next to Ruth. And uh, Ruth got up and cleaned the litter box and Pie Wacket's litter was never neglected again. Well, you know what? Actions speak better than meows. Sure, absolutely. And I tell you, Pie Wacket was the best communicator. So okay. uh, uh, Ruth was working on her novel and um, paying bills and everything in her library. Well, Pie Wacket would go in there. And this was back in the day when we had the old uh, tractor feed printers. Yes, yes. One continuous pe uh, piece of paper and it would roll through and that's exactly the sound it made. Thank so you. Pie I'm on radio. <laughs> so Pie Whack, it would get under the paper as it was moving and pop it and it would just pop, pop, and, and you know, like a ghost. Yeah. And uh, after, unfortunately, Pie Whack, it asked her husband to, to let her out. Pie Whack, it never went out. Strictly indoor kitty. Oh. And for some reason, the next door neighbor found Pie Wacket and took her to the vet and had her put to sleep. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, yeah. so she might've thought she's doing something of kindness and compassion for an elderly cat, but she hadn't probably never seen Pie Wacket because she oh, was she, an indoor yeah, cat. She had, she oh, had, but okay. anyway, I was trying to help her out. Okay. I know. Yeah. There's no help here, but <laughs> But anyway, so Pie Wacket was euthanized humanely. Good news there. So the next time Ruth went in to, to work on her novel and pay bills, of course, Pie Wacket wasn't there. And the place was just, she had put it off for so long because it had been such a joy to, yeah. to see Pie It was do a little that. game, that pop, pop, pop. Yes. Well, as it turns out, when it came time to print, the paper started popping on its own. Oh, and she felt the cat brush up against her leg. Well, which is weird because she didn't have a cat. Pie Wacket was her only kitty. Wow. And so this kept on for the longest time. And then you said about eight months later, something happened. Yes. Well, you know, the, the visits got gradually farther apart and more irregular. And, and uh, then Ruth bought a new printer. Oh. And it never happened again. Wow. So, wow. So, yep. But okay. it was... 
it was a joy and, you know, they got to say goodbye. So it was a very good thing. Well, there was another one that it shows that sometimes maybe the ghost, the cat that has departed, there's been people that sometimes feel like the new cat that they get. Is that just a coincidence that they seem to act and behave the same unique ways as the kitty that's now departed? And I just teed you up for the ceiling fan gremlin. That's a chapter featuring a gal named, is her name really Tracy Big Pond? It really is. Oh my gosh. What does she call her kids? Trisha Little Little Lake? I mean, seriously. That's her maiden name. Oh, okay. <laughs> so fortunately her son has his dad's name. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this involves this gal named Tracy who loved fun movies and cats, especially Steven Spielberg flicks like Gremlins. Mm -hmm. And she had a, um, a little boy. Her son was named Jimmy. So yes. tell us about what's the ceiling fan Gremlin. Well, she adopted a kitty that looked a lot like a Turkish van. And oh gosh, I forget what she, uh, it wasn't Mogway. It was Gizmo. Gizmo. Oh, Gizmo. Yeah. Yes. Gizmo. Uh, she named him Gizmo because he just seemed to be appropriately, you know, just seemed to have a little mischief, but still was very sweet, like the, the character in the movie. And then he had a, an accident when he was only a year old. And wow. it was 10 years before she could get another cat. And then she started looking online. And yeah, she liked and, the breed, the Turkish fan, right? Well, yeah, she found out accidentally that he was a Turkish fan type. Oh. And so she adopted a real Turkish van and uh, went, drove 10 hours to, to pick him up. And, and she lets them name themselves. She, they okay. give her a sign and uh, still no name, still no name, still no name. And she kept calling him a, a, uh, a demon. And, and yeah. she felt like he was telling her, no, I'm not a demon, but you know, I am kind of naughty. So at one point, her husband brings the kitten down and puts him in her arms and says, here you go. And, and she thought that he'd been teasing the cat. Well, it turned out we have no idea how it happened, but the kitty jumped and grabbed the ceiling fan blade and was what? going around just <laughs> like the scene from Gremlins where in the, oh, the, the bar, yes. the, the gr little gremlin was attached to the blade going round and round. Of course, it didn't go round and round. It only took a second. But but anyway, she realized when when he told her the story <laughs> and survived and and survived. Yes, that he was gremlin. So how was gremlin sort of maybe suggested that could have come back from being the original gizmo well you know a lot of different activities they had in common for one thing she trained gizmo to walk on a leash and that or on a harness yeah and that took a while you know you got to get him used to the harness and then you got to get him used to the uh, walking around and then going outside well when gremlin arrived she put the uh, harness on him and he was ready to go. He knew exactly what it was wow. for. Wow. But also some in the car. I think the original kitty, Gizmo, didn't really want to be in a carrier, right? Neither one of them could tolerate carriers. And they had both had a love of fast food, especially anything that Tracy was eating. Wow. Wow. <laughs> if Tracy was eating it. It was theirs. And of course, very headstrong, which is also a trait of the breed. But to me, the thing that was the big deal was... Uh, not having to train him to walk. Yeah, on it's like leash. I've already done this in a previous life, right? I got this. I, I got totally this. got this. Wow. I mean, you mentioned that you had an experience. You want to share it? We got a few minutes left. What happened with you? Well, uh, we had had a, a little kitten who had was hydrocephalic, mm -hmm. and so we knew we weren't going to have him very long. But but we were able to find some medication, some homeopathic medication that alleviated his symptoms and he was very comfortable and things, you know, everything improved. And then when we were out of town for Thanksgiving, the, the medication stopped working, the pressure built on the brain, he was in a lot of pain. And my best friend had to call and say, we got to put him to sleep and the vet says we need to do it right now. Yeah, that's and hard. Yeah, it was, it was very hard. I mean, how helpless. But anyway, so of course, I gave permission because it was the right thing to do. And 
got home a month later. Now, a month later, we were on our second litter of kittens after Maynard's loss. So, and by know, the way, everyone, humbly, she's being humble, but she has helped rescue, save, and foster and found homes for more than 2,500 cats and kittens. Well, so, me and my husband. Yes, you and <laughs> Weems, <laughs> Weems Huto. And she is the past president of the Cat Writers Association. So go ahead. So anyway, it was a month, you know, I mean, around here, we don't have time to, to dwell, even no matter how painful it is. And uh, so one night, the, the window was open, the moonlight was seeping through the blinds. And I felt something jump on the bed. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it happens all the time. Yeah. And then the little footprints. And then I would sleep on my back with my, my legs crossed, which okay. to me was the most uncomfortable place in the house. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, whatever this was, laid down on my legs and didn't move. And I, wow. I held my breath. I looked. I didn't see anything. I could feel the pressure. And I just laid there not moving and enjoying that that moment, that moment to say goodbye. And wow. then I fell asleep and it never happened again. That's wild. I know people want to get their paws on ghost cats too. So Dusty Rainbow, how can they do that? Well, you can get it through Amazon. Uh, it's also available through Ingram. So if you have a bookstore that you like to uh, go to, you can have them order it. Amazon, it, it's a Kindle and ebook and paperback. And I guess by now, it's also available in hardback. From awesome. Amazon. And you have two sites you want to let people know to learn more about you and get their paws on some of your other books mm -hmm. and see some of the cool things you're doing in the world of pets. Stupidgravity.com is my <laughs> Wait a minute. I love this. Wait a minute. Stupidgravitypress.com. This is the name of her publisher. You can't forget that, can you? <laughs> you, you can't. You absolutely and what's your can't. personal website? Dustycatwriter.com. All right. Hey, Dusty, I'm so happy you could be on the show. You are so oh, can, can I add one more thing? Yes. If you have your own ghost cat oh, story yes, or please. other animal ghosts, please get a hold of me. And that's DustyCatRider at Verizon.net. DustyCatRider at Verizon.net. Because there's probably going to be another sequel to the sequel, right? Could be. All right. You heard it here first on the Old Behave Show. Hey, everybody. At this time, I also want to thank my producer, Mark Winter. He is the surgeon of sound. He is the executive producer of Pet Life Radio, the largest pet radio network on the planet. And humbly, Oh Behave is the longest continuously running pet podcast on the planet. We've been on the air since 2007. Check what I'm up to at Ardenmore.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and yeah, I just started TikTok. Oh, my cat. So <laughs> until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's all behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.